Thanks for tuning in. As all of you know, this is a time for many lessons, um, probably lessons uh, that are going to be different for each of us. Um, the lesson of discipline, uh, the lesson of patience, the lesson of prayer, not only for ourselves and our church family and community, but especially for the world. Today I want to do a biblical lesson where Jesus tells us not to be agitated or he says don't be troubled. A little background, it's Monday, Thursday when he speaks these words. Uh, he has had an extremely uh, busy day. He's mentioned that he's going away. And that was really troubling to the disciples. And as you know, Peter steps up and he says, I, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And the other disciples too, uh, they agree. And Jesus specifically points out Peter with his denial and with his betrayal. So that's a little bit of the background here. And then uh, Jesus in John 14. So if you want to grab your Bible, John 14, uh, that's where I'm going to read from. Uh, we're going to take a look at those opening verses, those first six verses. Where Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. So he's saying to us, don't be anxious. Uh, don't... Uh, you know, be uh, frazzled, if you will. He says, stay settled. And we think of the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. Well, Jesus just doesn't say things. He explains them. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. And now he goes on and tells us why. He says, believe in God, believe also in me. Wow, what a statement this is. He's saying to his little band, believe in your father, your heavenly father. And then he says, believe in me. Here Jesus is telling them, I'm God. I'm one with my father. And so he says, as you believe in the Father, so also believe in me. Trust in me. Then he tells us all the good things to come for his beloved and redeemed and saved people. He says, in my Father's house are many rooms. So here Jesus is speaking about heaven. And he uses an... Uh, earthly visual here, doesn't he? We all understand rooms in our house or rooms in the motel. All of us get that. And so in order to help us know more about our heavenly home, he says there's many rooms. Uh, no need to be anxious. There's plenty of space is what he's saying. And he goes on, he says, if this weren't so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. So he says, what I'm saying is true. He said, and I would have let you know if there's another option here, but no other option. He said, this is what's being prepared for you. A house with many rooms, he says. Then he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So this is Monday, Thursday. I mentioned that before. The next day, Good Friday, Jesus is going to go and prepare that place for us. He does it in such an obedient way, doesn't he? Such a humble way. He's about to be taken away as a common criminal. He's about to 
be unjustly accused, taken through a mock trial. He's about to be rejected by his own people, and even his own disciples are going to flee. They're going to run away, but he stays the course of preparation, doesn't he? He's going to accomplish what his father has sent him to do. And so in the end, as he says, it's finished. As he says, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. As he dies on the cross, and as his innocent body is taken down and put into the new tomb, And as he wakes himself up again, as he rises from the dead on Easter day, he has prepared that place for you and for me and for everyone who believes. He said, I'll come again and will take you to myself that where I am you may be also. Now, it's very true that Jesus reappeared on Easter Day and multiple times thereafter. But his great reappearing is going to be in the judgment. When he and all his holy angels come to rescue his beloved people, his beloved church, from this weary, decaying, dying world, He says, we are going to be where he is, eternal. Then he says, you know the way to where I am going. Here he's calling for faith, isn't he? Calling for true faith. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? So Thomas speaks for us all, doesn't he? He has questions. His vision can't see what God sees and knows. Also true for us, isn't it? But God sees. God knows, doesn't he? Then Jesus says these words. He says to Thomas and to the whole world, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus speaks definitively. There's no other path to the Father except through him. There's no other highway, no other pathway. He alone is our access to the Father. His unique person qualifies him. He truly is God, and he truly is our brother, the only one who can save. He says, I am the way, and he says, I'm the truth. That's all he spoke. That's all he knew was truth. He revealed his father to the world. He revealed himself and In so doing, he reveals the Father, doesn't he? And then he accomplished all that was necessary to win our salvation. And he says, I'm the life. He's the one who is our creator. He gives us breath and eyes and ears and nose and vocation and all that we need our life here on earth, but more importantly, he gives spiritual life, doesn't he? The Holy Spirit is in charge of that. He uses the message of Christ to give us faith, to renew faith, to energize our faith, and to keep us alive. Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now he pins down what he has meant when he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
in order for us to stand before the Father without fear, not be troubled, without anxiety, is to know that Jesus stands there for us, with us, and beside us. We're robed in his righteousness, aren't we? Forgiven by his lavish grace and mercy, by his obedience, by his death, and by his glorious resurrection. It is through him that we have access to our Father. So here we are in this world, probably troubled like never before. We're all dealing with this pandemic, not only here, but throughout our country. And so in every occasion, we want to hear Jesus' tender words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. He went on to say why. He said, because I've got you for the long run. I'm planning on being with you eternally. And so he takes our hearts and our eyes off of this world, doesn't he? Even though we live here. And he points us to the life that is to come. As we live here, he's with us. He's here. He walks with us. We're the baptized children of God. And we do have access to the Father through our dear Lord Jesus, our divine brother. The other day I was made aware of a sign. It said, trust God, wash your hands. Jesus is calling us to trust him. And in our life here to do what we are able to do, not only to care for ourselves, but to demonstrate our love for our neighbor. How blessed we are that Jesus has us in the palm of his hand, prepared to receive us into everlasting joy. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as unworthy as we are, we come to you with all of our petitions and, yes, our anxieties and our troubles. Help us cast all our care upon you. You've demonstrated so perfectly that you care for us. Help us as we live here in this world to keep focused on what is to come, our eternal room, our place with you in heaven. Today, use us wherever we are to comfort one another. We pray, especially for our leaders, for all those who are working to stem the tide of COVID-19 scientists and labs and doctors and nurses and everyone involved. We ask that you would give them courage and wisdom and energy. We pray too for all the families who are affected by this disease. We ask uh, that your angels would surround them and that you would have mercy on them. Jesus, uh, though we don't deserve a thing from you, yet you give us every blessing in this life and especially the blessing of life forever with you. Teach us day by day in your strength not to be troubled. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. God bless.